Hey, what is up folks? So we just had a video on elastic net regularization, which is an extension of ridge regression and also lasso regression. And while we're on that train, I wanted to talk about another really cool but much lesser talked about extension of lasso regression called the fused lasso. Besides just having a really badass name, I think this is a really useful form of lasso, especially as we'll see when it comes to time series application and spatial statistical applications. But we'll get to the why in a second. I actually want to start with the mathematical form of fused lasso, contrary to what we usually do on this channel. But looking at that mathematical form is going to give rise to, hey, when would such a mathematical form, what types of problems would such a mathematical form be helpful in trying to solve? So actually the first part of this is the exact same as lasso regression. In lasso regression we're saying that we have our residual sum of squares as we have in ordinary least squares. So this is just saying what is the magnitude of the difference between the true y's and the estimated y's from ordinary least squares. And with regular lasso regression we are saying of course I don't want the L1 norm of my betas to be too big, I want that to be less than or equal to some value T1. The size of T1 is going to control the amount of regularization. If T1 is a very very big number, we're essentially doing no regularization. If T1 is a very very small number, we are doing very strict regularization. The betas must be very 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 small, the L1 norm must be controlled very well. And now we have this second piece. So let's take a look at it first. Mathematically, it's saying we are summing from j equals 2 to p, which is the total number of variables that we have. And what are we summing up? We're summing the absolute value of the difference between beta j and beta j minus 1, between these adjacent beta parameters. So of course we have beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, and so for example we'd have beta 2 minus beta 1, taking the absolute value of that difference then we're adding to that beta 3 minus beta 2, the absolute value of that difference. Now, we're summing up all of those absolute values, and that must be less than or equal to some other thing, T2. So what is this trying to do? It seems important that we are dealing only with adjacent betas, and we are trying to make sure that the difference between adjacent betas is controlled in some way. Just as in the normal penalty, we were trying to make sure that the individual betas were controlled in some way, here we are trying to make sure that the difference between adjacent betas is not too big. We want the solution to be such that beta 1 and beta 2, whatever they are, are kind of close to each other. We're not going to be very happy if they're too far away from each other. Similarly, beta 2 and beta 3 better be kind of close to each other. We're not going to be happy if they're too far from each other. We're going to penalize that. Now why might we want to do this? What sorts of problems, what sorts of applications does this make sense to do? Well time series applications are going to be a really important one. And so I have two examples down here. The first one is an example of the time series applications where this is useful. And the other one is the spatial statistical applications where this is useful. Pretend that we're trying to predict the price of a house based on how much rainfall the city gets in January, February, March, April, all the way to December. And so we're doing that using a linear model, so we have our intercept beta naught, then we have beta January times the rainfall that you get in January, plus beta February times the rainfall you get in February, all the way down to beta November, rainfall you get in November, plus beta December, the rainfall you get in December. Now this may seem obvious, but let's go into the definition of what these betas mean when you're doing a linear problem. Beta January is going to be the coefficient or the effect that the rainfall in January is going to have on the estimated price of the house. Similarly, beta February is going to be the estimated effect that the rainfall in February would have on the price of the house. Now January and February temporally are very close to each other. Those months are right next to each other, and so what I would expect an expectation I would have is that the effect of the rainfall in January on the price of the house and the effect from the rainfall level in February on the price of the house should be kind of similar to each other. So let me use a different color here. These two betas should be kind of similar to each other. Those effects should not be too different because the weather in Jan and Feb should not be too different. And I would consider it a failure or something alarming in the model if the rainfall between those two months the effect of those rainfall levels had very, very, very different effects on the price of the house. And so for that reason now it makes exact sense why we would want these adjacent betas, these adjacent betas, to have an absolute difference, who is pretty small, who is not too large. Similarly going through all of the betas, beta November, beta December, the weather in November and December in terms of rainfall should be pretty similar, and so the effects of that rainfall as measured by these betas should also be pretty similar to each other.
And so it's exactly in these time series applications where adjacent betas do make sense in terms of time, should be related in terms of time, exactly where this fused lasso, this additional fused lasso penalty is very important and makes a lot of intuitive sense. Very, very similar idea in the spatial application. So I have a very uh, small example down here. Let's say that we are building a railroad and we are trying to estimate the total cost of that railroad. Now R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5 are going to be some measure of the roughness of the ground where we're trying to build the railroad on adjacent places in space. So R1 and R2 are plots of land that are adjacent to each other. Then after R2 we have a plot of land called R3, then we have R4 and R5. So these adjacent plots of land are each going to have their own roughness value measured by R1, R2, and so on and so on. And so it's the same exact logic, folks. It's the same exact logic. Whatever roughness value R1 and R2 have, we would expect the effect of those roughness values as measured by beta 1 and beta 2, the effect of those on the overall cost of the railroad should not be too different. They should be pretty similar to each other. Similarly, R4 and R5, beta 4 and beta 5, the effect of those roughness values on the overall estimated cost of the railroad should not be that different from each other. And so it's the exact same reasoning as the time case, it's just that we are dealing with adjacency here in terms of space, whereas here we were dealing with adjacency in terms of time. And so folks, very short video for you, that's exactly where the fused lasso is very powerful and we have numerical techniques to solve this, I'll link to some uh, packages of code that can solve this for you and enforce this constraint. But just wanted to put that on your radar in case you're dealing with a uh, linear problem that you're trying to solve where the betas are correlated in terms of either time or in terms of space. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Any comments or questions are welcome in the section below. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you all next time.